So to begin, what is your name and how do you spell it? Uh, my name is Deb Syrier, and the last name is C as in cat, Y-R-I-E-R. -E Thank you. And what is your title here? I'm the principal at Marquette Montessori Academy. So what is the Montessori method? The Montessori method is a method of education that has been in existence for 110 years. started out in Italy. Um, it is a method of education that is designed around the developmental needs of children at various stages. So Dr. Maria Montessori believed that children um, went through different developmental stages just like many um, educational theorists and she grouped them into three year age spans. So we have multi-age classrooms um, that are reflective of those stages. So we have our early childhood program that is three, four, and five-year-olds, which encompasses the kindergarten year as well. Um, and then we also have a lower elementary program that is reflective of ages six to nine, or first grade, second grade, and third grade. Okay. And what, what do you mean by multi-age? Is it just grouping different age groups together? So they have... Um, it's mixed, it, they're mixed grade classrooms, and those are designed that way so that children can learn from their peers just as much as they can from the adult in the environment. Um, we look at the teacher in the environment as a guide in the child's learning. So we work, we work to follow the child's interest, although we don't follow the child sort of off a cliff. We still keep them in a, um, on a path and making sure that they are meeting all of their um, academic and developmental milestones through their experiences in the classroom. Um, the materials in our classroom are hands-on and designed to be self-teaching so that the child, once, ex once exposed to a material, can then go back to that exercise many, many times to refine their practice and develop and deepen their understanding of a variety of concepts. So you spoke a little bit about it, but what are some of the specific benefits of younger students and older students working together? Um, the benefit of that is the biggest one is that it mimics community. And so when we go out into the world, you aren't just with isolated groups of children all, all of your same age. Uh, when you're in your homes and things like that, you're with your sibling groups and different things. So it's reflective of that in the classroom. Um, it also allows our students to develop the, that leadership capacity within themselves. So we look at, say, our kindergartners or our third graders as those third-year students in our program that um, we, they have extra responsibilities. And part of that responsibility is that they are the leaders in their space. And so they might be, that might take a real simple form as, you know, leading the line down the hallway, or it might be um, demonstrating a material to a classmate because they've, that's another way for a child to prove mastery of a certain skill is to be able to show it to somebody else. It might be that they are um, encouraged to buddy up with an, a younger student to do, um, to maybe read to that child, which would also enhance their own reading confidence and fluency, but might help a child who comes into school a little bit sad that day because somebody's going to sit down and read with them. Okay, and are there any challenges with younger students learning in the same level as some of the older students? You know, the only challenge that we face with that here at Marquette is that um, the community at large does not seem to understand that that's um, what we're here to do. And so we get a lot of um, surprise when we meet with parents of new students to say that we are a multi-age environment um, because most conventional schools are not. They're single grade classrooms and so families in our neighborhood when they walk in to register their children, they're like, what do you mean? My kid's going to be with first graders and second graders. He's a third grader. But then when we sit down and explain how the methodology works, parents are generally on board. Uh, we don't usually have issues with our students with that. Um, it's, there's a lot of respect shown for children and um, between themselves and, and with the adults in our environment. And again, uh, touching, you've touched on this before, but how are the features specifically different from features of tr the traditional school model? Well, in Montessori education, you, we work to build concepts from concrete to abstract work. And so, um, and that applies through every curriculum area from math to language, um, science, social studies, um, all of those different things. And so, the, although mainstream education is moving more towards a manipulative based sort of curriculum, Montessori has always been doing that for the last 100 years. Um, and the, the materials are designed to 
for each new presentation of a material or each scaffolded step along the way to teach an isolated skill. And so it's the building of those different isolated skills along a path and it's a very um, scientifically discovered path for the children. She was, Montessori was an observer. She was first a scientist and a doctor and she observed how children worked and challenges our teachers to do the same to be able to see uh, and meet the needs of children through materials that are designed to teach them different concepts. And what do you mean by manipulative way of teaching? So the, um, all of the materials that you see our students working with, they, um, they have objects to move and touch and feel. So like if they're, if say they're working on place value and they, one of their very first exposures to place value at the age of three or four is to, to, is to hold a unit bead in their hand, a one single little golden bead, and to compare that to what it means to hold a bar of 10 beads strung together on a wire or a square of 100 beads strung together on wires and bound together or a cube of 1,000 beads. And then they take those, once they have that exposure of just the isolated place values, and they take that to build numbers like 5,452 with combinations of those beads. And then they build to add those together, divide, subtract, multiply, all of those different things. Um, and they're, they're experiencing all those mathematical concepts with very physical tools in their hands. Nice. Um, is there proven research that sets Montessori education apart? Yeah, there are lots of studies. Unfortunately, I can't quote any of them right. to you, but there are lots of studies that do prove that um, that manipulative-based education, education where choice is a part of your learning, um, and that and that child directedness that we that we work to follow in our school, um, also the um, that multi-age component and the autonomy that the child has for learning is proven to show that Montessori education is and could be a way to change the conversation for education on the, on, on the earth, really, because it's an, it's an international model. And what makes Marquette different from other Montessori schools? Um, one thing that sets us apart from other Montessori schools in our area is that we are a public magnet program. So we are first and foremost designed to serve the neighborhood of Marquette Montessori. Um, within our boundaries and then so students that reside in our boundary if they are of appropriate age to register for either the three-year-old four-year-old or kindergarten class or first grade second grade third grade they automatically are given a space at Marquette um, and then families outside my neighborhood that reside either within South Bend Community School District or the South Bend community at large can then apply to attend my school um, there's no entrance requirement, so we take everybody, and um, they, it's, it's a balance of um, just community coming together and seeing the different interactions of different socioeconomic statuses and different things like that coming together. Um, it really is the population that Maria Montessori set out to serve. Um, 110 years ago, she started this method in the tenement buildings in Rome and she worked with the poorest of the poor and that was um, that was who she set out to serve because she felt that they deserved as much as the the children that were in the higher elite schools and so that's who we set out to serve as well just going off what you just said would you be able to elaborate more on the benefits of this being a public Montessori I think one of the benefits is it makes something accessible to um, people in the South Bend community that otherwise wouldn't be able to access this type of education. Um, most private Montessori schools are, um, the tuition that is required for those schools makes it so that it's out of the reach of a number of people in our population. And so I think that's a huge benefit. Um, the benefit that I think it brings to the community here is that idea that we look at respect for the child. And so children that might come to to us with trauma or with outside home experiences, they know that they walk in our doors and it's a safe, loving, caring place. And you hope that for every school, um, but we value the whole child. And so we look at more than just their academic growth, we look at their social and their emotional development as well. And that's as much of a priority in their education here as it is um, in any other uh, Montessori setting. So on the other side of that, what are some of the considerations that need to be taken into account when implementing 
the Montessori model into a public school? Well, there, that's a great question. Um, the, a for a Montessori method to be implemented with fidelity, there are um, standards that are set in place that are accepted nationally, um, actually at the state level as well, we're working to get those recognized. But the, one of the biggest criteria is the multi-age classroom setting. Um, another one would be to have a complement of Montessori manipulatives, and there are agreed upon um, lists of resources that need to be in classrooms. Um, another requirement would be to have um, a Montessori certified teacher. And so at Marquette, we have kind of a mixed bag right now. We have a, um, all of our teachers as a public program have to be dual licensed. So they have to have first and foremost their Indiana teaching cr credential to be able to work in a public education setting. But then they also, to be able to work here, they have to be Montessori certified. And so the district has been putting our teachers through Montessori certification training. Um, so right now I have um, 12 of my teachers are, 10 of my teachers are Montessori certified. I have two that are currently enrolled in training and the rest that are pending their enrollment after the completion of this year. Um, and that's, that, Montes that trained Montessori teacher makes a huge impact in the lives of the children and the ability to run an authentic Montessori classroom. Um, one of the other uh, hallmarks of quality Montessori education is what we call an uninterrupted work cycle. And so that's a two to three hour period of time where the children are left to work. And it does not mean that you are not teaching during that time. It just means that that is a time where it's not going to, it's not everybody stopping and going to the bathroom. It's not everybody stopping and going to recess. It's just this time to build and foster concentration skills, to build that self-help skills, the independence and sense of order within the children because it, without that time, everything can just become disjointed. And so at Marquette, we work hard. We have two large work periods, one of them being the full uninterrupted work cycle that generally happens in the morning. And then in the afternoon, every class has almost another complete full uninterrupted work cycle. Wow. So are there any challenges um, that Marquette faces in being a public Montessori? Um, I think one of the challenges that we face is our mobility rate um, because mobility impacts children whether they're moving in and out of a conventional school I'm or sorry, what's mobility? mobility is the child that um, that comes and goes throughout the school year. Okay. So we have children because we are a public school I had children even registering today to attend my school um, and so mobility impacts children at no matter what kind of situation they're transitioning between throughout the year because oftentimes that mobility is coming because of home situations they've been evicted from a home or something like that so they're changing addresses and having to change schools um, in our setting that's impacting children because the, the method of education is so different than what else is being served throughout the rest of the corporation so they're coming in not only to a new school but it's a whole new way of teaching and so they have to get acclimated into the environment. Um, I think the other challenge that our, sc our school is facing is that, that teacher credentialing piece and um, continuing to sustain the, the funds necessary to, to um, train the teachers to be able to do what is needed in the classrooms and to run classrooms at a high level of fidelity. So we've spoken a lot about what is worth. Um, is there anything in your opinion that could use a little bit more improvement? Could use a little bit of improvement. Um, again, I think that, and I, and I know our district is working on this, is working, f is working on um, the teacher training piece. That's a huge piece right now that w there's lots of work being done on that. Um, I also think just the, the greater piece, and this is, this is a problem for Montessori education nationally, is that for years and years and years, uh, Montessorians kept to themselves and they kept the good work that they were doing isolated within their own community. And so getting that word out about Montessori education, because there are so many things that even 110 years ago she put into place that were unheard of that are now becoming mainstream, but are, are forgotten about that she was one of the originators of that, even things like child size furniture, uh, where she was one of the first people to do that, but go into any school that you find and you're gonna see child size furniture. But if we had been advocates for children all along, those things might have happened more quickly. I'm gonna need a tissue, I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. 
I'm sorry. So from what I oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, from what I saw on the school's profile, it looks like there is a very diverse student population, mm -hmm. both racially and socio socioeconomically. Um, can Correct. you tell me a little bit more about why that might be important? Um, I think that diversity reflects community, and so it reflects our population here in South Bend. Um, currently, we sit at about um, I want to say our we are about 50% um, African American and about 50% non African American. I know the tracking based on the federal requirements. And so, and then we have about 65% free and reduced lunch here at our school. And I think that allows us to expose children to all different kinds of people and that helps them to interact and figure out how to work with people, regardless of what their backgrounds are. And it brings a richness to what, who we're working with. And what are enrichment days? Enrichment days for Marquette um, actually started in our initial year as a way for my kindergarten students to be able to have field trips. Um, my preschool students attend half day, and so to, in order to coordinate a field trip, transportation couldn't manage that in a half day. So we have one day a month set aside that is now building-wide enrichment where Oftentimes, the field trips get scheduled for different things like visiting the farm or the firehouse, the grocery store, um, but also times like today where we're doing author studies. And so my kindergartners are studying different authors. My elementary students are doing um, Dr. Seuss because it was his birthday yesterday. So we've got all kinds of things going on for that. Um, they are just a time for us to dive deep in our curriculum. It's a way of giving everybody an opportunity to do enrichment and as opposed to just those children that are always at that enrichment level mm -hmm. um, and, and it inspires other learning outside of the day. Oftentimes we use them either as a launch for a study or a, a, like a culminating event for a study. So I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction, but okay. um, we, for one of our other segments, have had a lot of talk about the state grading system. Yeah on schools and you know a lot of edu a lot of politicians have said well we don't know how to do this differently and this is something that impacts you know the whole of south bend um, mm -hmm. so what's your opinion and theory that yeah i don't i don't think my school's letter grade is reflective of all of what we do right. i mean i really don't and I think if you walk in my classroom doors, you'll see preschool students and kindergarten students doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division with deep levels of understanding, not just a surface level, um, to establish a school letter grade based on one assessment that's given at one point in the year. Everybody's entitled to a bad day, a bad two days. And we just finished ISTEP, um, the first round of it yesterday. And yesterday I had three students that just chose to sit and they the stress of the test it caused them just to sit and not take it yeah, it doesn't reflect their daily learning at all and we work really hard to make it a non-stressful situation but that's the reality of it and to have um, teacher compensation and school evaluations and school letter grades all of that impacted by one test I, I just think it's it's not a very strong system so you, do you think that there should be additional considerations outside of teaching toward that one test? Absolutely. Um, and to, to tell you what those things are off the top of my head, I don't know that I could give you a good answer for that. But I, I think there needs to be growth models involved in it. I think you need to look at um, students that, you know, like Marquette, we are impacted hugely by mobility. And I understand that ISTEP only looks at students that you've had for 162 days. But a child that's even been with my, built, my program for only 162 days is a different child than one that I've had since they were three because um, they've grown up in our system. You look at my iRead data from last um, spring and summer, and every single one of my students that started and stayed with us for six years passed the iRead assessment. And, but that data doesn't show as, as the reported data. 
because it's, you can't drill down that way in a public forum. But when we sit and look at it to prove success of our program, absolutely it's there for the kids that grew through us. Congrats to your students. Thank you. And is there anything else you would like to add? Oh, goodness. I just think, I mean, Montessori education is, somebody once told me that she set out to change the conversation uh, for education for young children. And I think that it has such capabilities of doing that. If people were to really come, down, come observe, uh, and take the time to, to look past the surface level understanding of things and to spend quality time in a Montessori setting, whether it be public, private, magnet, non-magnet, um, to see the richness and beauty of what's going on here and what you find it, the stability of the method across the globe is um, phenomenal and just to see it play out.